Mission accomplished, but the struggle is still real. What's up guys, welcome to this video. This one's gonna be a little bit different, so if you're not a subscriber or you haven't been following me um, or this channel for a while, it's probably not the video for you. I'm kind of just gonna riff off the top of some notes that I have, and I basically just wanted to open up this dialogue again with you guys. I know I've had some time off the channel again this year, um, and just give you an update with some things that are happening with me, my sort of opinions and perspectives on everything that's happening elsewhere in the world right now. And yeah, just basically open up to you guys. Um, so I hope you appreciate the video and bear with me as I literally just read off my notes. Um, I think what inspired this video was one of my students uh, during one of my live student calls asked me a question or left a comment that I, I thought is worth expanding on. And he just said, all the news and attention on the, the sickness is causing a lot of uncertainties. And as a result, I'm losing the momentum and motivation I had before all this chaos started. And he, he continues a bit, but I really want to dig into that momentum and motivation before this chaos started. I've been feeling that turn for a while, actually, a lack of momentum and motivation. And that was before the chaos started. So I'm almost coming from an opposite perspective here. Um, so, I mean, I, I've, been, I've been back in Colombia for a couple of months now. And since the start of this year, I've actually felt that exact same struggle. I've really felt the urge to just kind of kick back, smash pizzas, Netflix. I've been enjoying being single again um, and basically not being very productive or being very focused at all. And obviously with the two businesses, so that's the, the course business or the, this business that I have through YouTube and then my Amazon business as well. Um, both of those have really suffered or the results haven't suffered so much as my my dedication to those businesses has suffered um, over the last couple of months. And now with all this stuff that's happening in the news and around the world, it really can accentuate that that feeling of just that like inertia and, and, and inability or a lack of desire to, to want to do much. And for me, it, I sort of hit a worse point because I was already like chilling out. And then I kind of started to think about the world and what everyone else is going through. And I think the fear that's running through society. And then I kind of just realized that for me, nothing had actually changed. And I was really just, I was really just internalizing something that is an external event. And that is really bad because there are things that we can control and things that we can't control. But what we do have control over is our own perception, our own our own thought processes, the way we think and the way we deal with what comes at us. We can't necessarily change the outcomes, but we can at least change the efforts and we can change our effort, I mean, and where we put that effort towards. That really got me thinking um, because I did, I have been letting myself get sucked up into the fear. And also I'm thinking about the, the medium term, the long term, which I'm sorry, guys, this is going to be a bit of a ramble video. I have a lot of topics to cover, but it's just not going to come out in a particularly structured way. So, so bear with me. Um, I want to talk about sales for a little bit. So I've been sucked into fear and I'll be talking about this in probably the video that would have come out previous to this. I expected the sales would really drop off a cliff. Um, so it's like I expected that the, the level of fear that I've been feeling would then correlate to the level of fear that other people are feeling and therefore that would correlate to the amount of sales that my business is getting. Um, and that hasn't actually turned out to be the case. So quite a few people have been asking about sales. So I will bring this up. I hope you can see that. If not, I'll put a screenshot up. Um, that's our US sales. So over the last 30 days, they've gone down 17%. And that's because we've got a bit of a seasonal effect going. But on last year, they're up 23%. And actually, I'll, I'll zoom that in a bit. I hope you can see there's a bit of a dip. There's two dips there. And those are where my peer feet because I fear peaked uh, because I pretty much thought that everybody else was terrified. And so nobody's going to be shopping on Amazon. But as I've done more research and I've realized, and also I've seen the sales come straight back up to where they were before, uh, people aren't really scared at the moment. I don't know whether that's good or that's bad, honestly, um, but sales on Amazon are going fine at the moment. Traffic on Amazon itself is up. It's like up like 30%, which is really unexpected for Amazon. And that's why they're having to hire all these workers and everything that can't handle the demand right now. Our conversion rates are lower at the moment because we can't fulfill goods for the next three to four weeks because Amazon has, has slowed them down, but people are still buying, which is the crazy thing. So sales are good, very volatile. As you saw, it went down and then it doubled, which isn't normal for us. So that sort of got my uh, got my fear response going. 
um, what else in terms of sales? We're looking now at things we can do. Like obviously if you can fulfill the goods yourself then you're good right now. You'll be taking taking full advantage of this increased traffic opportunity. Uh, we, we don't have any third party fulfillment right now. PPC is another thing just in terms of practical things you can look at. We're looking at that. How can we maximize our ranking power? How can we focus on keywords that are working to just drive as many sales as possible? Um, but overall sales are good. So that is a bit of a side point away from the fear and, and getting sucked into it. Because um, the next thing I want to talk about is is why I think people really should be scared. And I don't mean Amazon sellers. <sighs> yeah, I'm sorry for the jumbled nature of this video. Um, Amazon sellers as a whole, we're going to do really well out of all of this. The, the world is, is shifting, I believe. I believe the world is changing in a lot of ways very rapidly and will change Maybe you aren't, you aren't seeing it right now, but I think the real effects are gonna become visible starting in the next couple of months and then leading throughout the rest of the year and definitely into next year. Um, what's happening right now is a, is a once in a century event with all the, not just the health impacts that we're gonna be seeing over the next month, probably a peak, um, but definitely the economic impacts and just the shocks that are going through ev literally every industry around the world, every country, every industry in every country around the world is is really impacted by this. Some in really good ways, like e-commerce, for example, or, you know, anything that's to do to do with uh, like distributed, anything to, that's to do with taking business online that was offline, like e-commerce, like software, you know, team collaboration, anything or, or cloud computing, anything that enables businesses to go online right now is going to be just hugely benefiting. Um, and will continue to because the shifts have not been seen yet completely. Right now, everyone's just like, oh, it's just a temporary thing. This is going to happen for a month or something. But here's the thing. And there's a great example, which I wish I could point to the exact study. But there have been multiple studies throughout history where they've done uh, impact studies on, let's say, a traffic jam or some sort of road obstruction. And so you've got people who are commuting to work. They go the same way every single day. They've done that for a year or how many years they've been working at that job and living in the same place, right? They have exactly the same route to and from work. Then let's say you put a traffic obstruction. You're doing roadworks, you're constructing something that actually blocks that particular route. So all of those people who were taking that same route um, are inconvenienced and they have to go and find another way. And that is an inconvenience to them because normally that other way on average takes them longer than the way that they were that they had found. However, some percentage of those people who then get inconvenienced and have to go and find a different way to get to their work, it's like maybe five to 10% of those people, they actually find a better, faster, more efficient way to get to work. So what that means is this whole time, they just been taking the wrong way to work basically. And it wasn't until something fell in front of them and forced them to change their ways that they actually found out a different way was much better. And so the, while the 90% of people are just overall inconvenienced and then they go back to the same way they were before or they didn't, they didn't really look for a better way, that 5 to 10% of people, they actually save time every single day after that forever or again, at least while they're working in the same place and living in the same place. And so the net benefit is actually positive because those people save time forever, not just for the time that they're inconvenienced, but they keep doing that after that change is gone. So once the road opens up again. And you can see that, you can go and look that up on Google um, for the exact study, but it's been done in multiple different contexts as well. And it really represents this idea that in a lot of ways, people are, we, we don't think about most things that we do. We tend to follow other people. So if the people around us are doing something without us really analyzing whether that's the right thing to do, we just kind of do it. And secondly, whether or not we're following other people, once we've started doing certain things a certain way, for example, you start a certain career, you start a certain job, or you start, you work in a particular type of way. Once you've started, uh, once you've built that habit or that routine, it's very hard to change it. And your mind, your brain doesn't really want to change it because it makes things easy. You don't have to think about it. Whether or not that habit or that routine is actually the best way of doing things, the fact is that we tend to just stick with them until something forces us to change. And where I'm going with this is that I think what is happening now is going to be that on a, again, it's gonna affect every single country and it's gonna affect every single industry. Now, in a lot of ways, those impacts are just gonna be a one-time negative thing. Boom, this, this was a real inconvenience. And then at the end of the day, let's go back to normal. Let's get back to the way things were. Let's get back to those existing habits. Some percentage 
of those changes is going to be exactly like that example I just talked about. Some percentage of people are going to be, or industries, companies, businesses, they're going to find new, better ways of doing things, which will benefit them permanently from now until forever. Um, and, and on the flip side as well, some industries are actually going to be not, not only inconvenienced, but they're actually going to be potentially destroyed. A lot of businesses will just go out of business by these changes and some will be negatively impacted. So while other people are taking advantage of the opportunities that, that will, are going to arise, uh, a lot of other people, industries, businesses, countries um, are going to suffer permanently as well as a result of this. And again, I'm going round about here, but I think you're going to see some really big changes. Everything is going to move online. A lot of people are not going to see those changes until it's too late. A lot of industries are going to be in a lot of real trouble right now and are not just going to bounce back like this because the fact is that there are better ways of doing things and there are worse ways of doing things. And I think a lot of people, again, and companies as well, stick with the worst way of doing things until they either go out of business or they get forced to change. And so this, everything that's happening now is going to make a lot of people go out of business. It's going to cause a lot of pain. It's also going to cause some proportion of people to be able to see the light or the opportunity over that other side it's like the alternate route and then they're going to start taking that alternative route. So what was I saying? This is how, this is how big this impact is going to be. Now, I don't know. I feel like I could be overreacting to this. I'm either overreacting. I could be underreacting. Or I am correctly predicting it and I'm just ahead of the curve by maybe a few months. Because I, again, going back to seeing these sales, um, it definitely hasn't hit the consumer, yeah, the normal everyday person doesn't realize that a lot of these changes are coming, even though everyone's locked at home, lots of people have already lost their jobs. So my personal prediction, and I'm no expert, I, I've just started learning about this stuff uh, very recently as this stuff is unfolding, as I think it's worth learning about now while, while we're in this unique time. Um, I'm putting this prediction out here, so I'm gonna look back at this in a couple of months and, and we can all be the judge of, of, of how this has played out in a couple of months to six months to 12 months. But what I think we're gonna see, I mean, there's no question about whether there's gonna be a recession or not. That's, we're in a recession basically. Um, the real question is how deep and how significant and how fast or what, what does the recovery profile out of that recession look like? And that sounds a little bit technical maybe, but essentially that's just wrapping up the things that I just talked about, which is what are these impacts gonna be? How a business is gonna have to adapt how many will actually be able to adapt and how will they do that, how effectively. And, and I think it's impossible to actually predict the, the exact outcome. I don't think anyone knows the answer to that. Um, but I think we're definitely gonna see a lag. I think over the next couple of months, you're gonna see more and more data come out, first of all, where businesses are just going out of business. Again, not e-commerce. E-commerce is benefiting massively right now, uh, which is, it's good to be on that side. But overall for the world, it's not necessarily a good thing. So I think you're gonna see a lot of that coming out. Um, you're gonna see a lot of people realizing that, or more people, the, the unemployment rate is gonna go up. It can't go down right now. It's only gonna go up over time as more businesses again realize they need, they're being affected. I think the latest thing I saw was a potential uh, mortgage crisis in the US. And you're just gonna see these, these ripple effects as more and more industries start realizing that the industry next to them just got affected. So then that therefore affects them. And I guess where I'm going to with this is that overall it should affect e-commerce as well, because at the end of the day, if when, you, when you're in a recession, um, and again, whether it's, a, whether it's a mild recession, like an average one, or whether it's like the great recession of 2008 or whatever it is that they call it, or whether it's like the great depression, which is then the next magnitude, which is like really long-term, really slow recovery, I don't know where it's going to end up, but whatever the case is, people stop spending money as much on discretionary things. And so while uh, here, are the, here are the factors is like e-commerce will win relative to other retail because people who were buying in bricks and mortar are going to go start buying for, on online. Again, that like percentage of people who were doing things one way are now forced by change to realize that there's a better way. So they will just move to online shopping. So online shopping will have a lot more demand coming into it, a lot more money coming into it. Um, but then you've also got the opposite effect, which is this recession, which is, uh, you know, whatever, whether it's depression, whatever, um, where overall spending goes down. So then you can see all of these like just crazy changes happening within industries, within, you know, product categories, within, uh, you know, your product line, for example, if you're a brand. 
Um, I'm going to talk a lot more about this on this channel. I think it's worth talking about. And, and again, I, I think you're going to see these, these effects coming out into play in the near future. And I definitely want to be, I want to be that person who's already taken the alternative route. And I guess that leads me on to my next point. This, this is a bit of a downer. And I think, I think although it's a bit of a downer, it's worth talking about because there are actions you can take to control your risk. And I think that's something that's super important right now is, is I'm not saying this to like make you despair or make you lose hope. Again, we're on the cutting edge of this stuff. Or maybe not the cutting edge, but like we're ahead of the curve. Um, and, and so it's important to realize that you can do a lot of things right now, depending on how much resources you have, depending on how much ability to learn you have right now, which I have a lot of faith in you guys. You guys are, I know you guys can pick all this stuff up really quickly, probably faster than me. So now's the time to, to, to think about your risks. What are you exposed to, but also what are your opportunities? And to do that, you need to, to have some idea of what's gonna happen. I don't think it's just gonna be boom, we're straight back to normal. Um, and then the question is like, if it's coming into a recession, what do you do? I think the first first thing to do right now, control risk, uh, conserve cash. You wanna have cash in the bank, just, and you don't wanna spend it as well. And that's why I'm like, why are people buying all these discretionary products right now? Stop spending money, guys. Like, I mean, spend money because it helps me, but don't spend money because it'll help you. And then therefore, when you lose your job or whatever, or your income goes down or your business starts running into trouble, you'll, you'll have the money. I, I don't know. It's a bit of a, bit of a catch 22. Um, so have cash. <laughs> Conserve cash, that's what I'm doing. I'm looking at my expenses. I'm looking at, uh, we're doing business forecasting right now. Sorry, inventory forecasting. So we're seeing, let's say, yeah, maybe sales don't change at all. Maybe they go up. They're going, they're sort of going up at the moment. They should be if we could fulfill. So I'm expecting sales to go up in like the short term. But realistically, again, if you're in a recession, they'll probably go down by some extent. So if they go down, what does that mean to our to our business? It doesn't mean much. Again, as most Amazon businesses, there's no debt. You're just making profit like, you have very little overhead, incredibly little overhead relative to, again, bricks and mortar to the store on the street or to the department store. They have so much debt. They have so much overhead. They have rent to pay. They have so many employees. They're the ones that are just like, they're really screwed in circumstances like this. Whereas businesses like mine, for example, I have to go and run the exact numbers, but I mean, in the worst case, like it's just not that bad. <laughs> I know because you can do the maths. Like you've got no debt. You don't have to worry about interest. You don't have to... Um, yeah, you don't have to worry about interest or paying the bank back. And then you have very little in the way of overhead and employees to pay. So like, what's the worst that can happen? Your sales go down a bit. And then eventually when the recovery happens, they go up. Or again, if you're in the right industry, if you're sorry, in the right niche or category, or you can pivot correctly, or you can take advantage of this opportunity, your sales go up anyway. So again, I'm jumbling a lot of these thoughts up because there's a lot of thoughts to think about right now. So that's what you should do. Control risk, um, get cash. Uh, other than that, I guess, be safe <laughs> in terms of things to do. But the, I think the last point that I wanted to talk about is just that feeling of, of, of being ahead of the curve. And this was really the main idea of, of this video, but I got sidetracked, I'm sorry. Despite all this crazy shit that's happening in this world right now, I'm looking at myself and my life and my business and, and where everything is at right now. And I just feel super, super grateful to be ahead of that curve. Because despite everything, like as a business owner and as a business owner in e-commerce or as an Amazon FBA seller, as somebody who's doing something that's ahead of the curve, that's efficient, that's online, um, that's that's high margin, low debt, you know, like low overhead. I just realized how much freaking control I have, how much, how how awesome it is to be in this position where I can literally just look at things and be like, I, I can see what the worst case is, and. Like, it's not, I don't want the worst case to happen, but it's not that bad either. And I have a lot of control. And, and that's like, you know, it's a responsibility. The more control you have, the more responsibility you have. There are two sides of the same coin. Sometimes it's difficult to have that responsibility, which is to be responsible for employees or to even to put information like this out here. It's, it's still a responsibility I have to be able to, to, to be honest and to be transparent with you guys. Um, and I don't take that responsibility lightly or any of those responsibilities lightly. Sometimes that's difficult you know, that's life is taking the right responsibilities. So I'm grateful to have that control. Um, I'm grateful to have chosen what I consider to be the right responsibilities. And, and again, really getting back to the point of this mission accomplished video, I've been looking back, it's coming up on, I think actually four years ago to the day, maybe, maybe a few more days plus or minus uh, is when I actually wrote my resignation letter as an engineer and, and then went and handed that into my boss at the mine that I worked at in back in Australia. 
And that was when I decided that I was going to do this. I was going to start this. I was going to start working online. I was going to try and build up an online income. And obviously, I had no idea that in four years time, four years from now in the future, all this crazy shit would happen and suddenly everyone would be locked inside and making online would be making money online would be like the best thing to be doing. I had no idea that that would happen. Uh, so I clearly I locked into it from that respect. But at the same time, back then, I knew that it was still the way of the future. I could see how how inefficient it was to, to, to just follow the herd and how suboptimal it was and how much you were leaving on the table um, in terms of your own life and your potential and your ability to have that control that I just talked about. Not just the money, because the only purpose of money is to have options and to have freedom and to have control anyway. So it all comes, it all comes back to the same thing. But right now I feel incredibly grateful to be here in this position. Um, and, and I feel very justified as well. Again, I, 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 can't, I can't say that I'm cutting edge because you know, doing it three years ago, there were still lots of other people doing it. Definitely, I feel ahead of the curve though. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to be here because I, I know a lot of it comes down to hard work. It does come down to, you know, critical thinking and making the right decisions. But at the same time, you don't, you're not in control of everything. I wasn't born. I didn't choose to be born in the country that I was going to be born in. I didn't choose to be educated the way that I was educated. Uh, and, and, and those sorts of opportunities are really not available to a lot of people from birth. So in that respect, I'm lucky, you know, I'm lucky and I'm grateful to have been lucky. I'm here in Medellin at the moment. And this is actually the first place that I came when I was making these changes three and a half years ago. I, I, I quit my job and then I was unemployed. I had no income for a while. And then I started the Amazon business. And as I started the Amazon business, I actually moved here to Colombia. And that means that this place is like really tied up in my heart and, and my sort of self identity in terms of becoming an entrepreneur, in terms of becoming financially independent, in terms of achieving, suddenly achieving all of these goals that I had for myself. And again, getting ahead of the curve and, and stop and then leaving the herd, basically stop following everyone else and doing my own thing for reasons which I wanted to do them for, if that makes sense. So yeah, I've just been looking out here in the mornings and it's been like, it's like cloudy, rainy mornings with like fog sort of hanging over the mountains. It's very beautiful. I don't know if I'll maybe stick a clip in here or something, but it's just been making me feel super grateful and, and realize that my mission has been accomplished, even though, you know, times are so uncertain and everything's still, it's like life is always a struggle in a way. Um, yeah, I think if I were to summarize this whole video in which I've just been rambling up into like one point, it would be that I hope you guys, I hope you guys can come with me. I hope you guys, wherever you are right now, maybe, in, maybe some of you are ahead of me. And if, if so, that's freaking great. But I want as many people as possible to be able to experience this. And I think what's going to happen over the next year or so is going to push a lot of people, not you guys, because you guys already know about this, but I think it's going to push a lot of other people to realize just like that traffic obstruction that forces people to go a different way and then they find a better way. I think a lot of people are going to find that better way over the next 12 months. So that was a really long roundabout way of saying that I wanted to do this video as a personal share. Again, I appreciate you if you are still here watching this. Give the video a like if you did appreciate the, the honesty. Um, and with the next video that comes out, make sure you stay tuned for that. But I'll be back to the regular talking in a more coherent way. So peace, guys. I hope you're all doing well. Um, say my love and best regards and I'll see you in the next video.